blessed uh, Tuesday to you as we come with your daily encouragement. Now, remember the last three times we had seven seals, and once the seven sealed open, then there was seven trumpets, and once the seven trumpet holden, we had the suspension, and now we have the seven bowls, and guess what? In this one, we actually have a completion, a seventh bowl that is going to be poured out. And you might say, huh, we've arrived at the end. Well, not quite. We're getting there. But at least this series of three, these series of sevens, these three a series of three sevens have completed. And so we have the description, the final bowl of God's wrath. And remember, it is to lead to repentance. And when we last left off from yesterday and Friday, it was the assembling of people in the Valley of Megiddo. The decisive battle is about ready to take place. The three demonic force, forces, the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet are gathering from the other side, and they are spewing out frogs as emissaries of this decisive battle. And so we wait with weighted breath what happens in the bowl of wrath, number seven. It says in verse 17, the seventh angel poured his bowl into the air, and a loud voice came out of the temple from the throng, saying, It is done. And we could translate that to its Hebrew equivalent, Amen. Now, this is not Amen and like, oh, I'm glad it's here. No, it's Amen. It is done. That's what Amen means. It is done. And so there were came flashes of lightning, rumbles and peals of thunder, and a violent earthquake, such as had not occurred since the peoples were upon the earth. So violent was the earthquake. The great city was split into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. God remembered great Babylon and the great wine cup of the fury of his wrath. And every island fled away, and no mountains were to be found. And huge hailstorms, each weighed about a hundred pounds, dropped from heaven on the people until they cursed God for the plagues of hail. So fearful was that plague. Now, once again, we're back to the plagues back of Egypt. We went, had a little excursion into the Valley of Megiddo to another part of the Old Testament, but it is that final decisive battle. And what did we see here as well? The protective rivers are not protecting the outside forces from Israel. So now the protective heavens that separates the waters from the waters that we have in creation, those have now been pierced. Fire is coming from the sky hailstone, and other things are now closing in. There is no place to hide because earthquakes are happening. There are no more mountains, no more caves. Everything is exposed. Although one might say that the Battle of Armageddon and Armageddon is still there, we don't know. It just seems that everything is upheaval. Now, interestingly enough, Mary describes something like this when she's describing the birth of her son. The nobles will be brought low, and the low will be raised up. There is tossing and a turning in all of God's creation. And so these are reminders that we shouldn't sit on our laurels very long, because this decisive bowl of wrath has taken place. So what we are to get here, once again, is the purposes of these bowls. Reiterate, turn to God. The other thing is to know, hold on to no earthly thing. Turn to God and hold on to God's name, God's power, God's forgiveness. Don't hold on to any idols that will just lead us astray. Our last Sunday, we talked about God being the God of power and authority. Authority also contains with it the word exercise, exorcism, taking out the bad demon for the good spirit. Also, exercising authority means to make things right when things are kittywampus. And so God is starting creation over again, not unlike when the waters of Noah 
when there was only protection was the ark. And so that's what we have here. The world is coming apart at the seams. Now, we'll finish this battle in Revelation 19, but there will be a little more of an excursion, not too dissimilar to what we had in chapters 12, 13, and 14 before. We'll have a description more of what battle is going on in the heavenlies. But we're called once again to suspend that vision in order to see something greater and deeper. But each of these is a reminder of holding on to Jesus and Jesus alone. And so I invite you to do the same. Hold on to the Lord. Hold on to the one who is coming, who is here, who dwells among us. And so we pray and expect what this God will bring, a new heaven and a new earth. That's at the end of this book, and it is coming. God bless you today. We trust that these continue to be words of encouragement. Take care. We'll see you tomorrow.